At this moment, we are surrounded by so much information and a level of communication about the season that we are in. And you know, after a year of a so-called new normal, the level of fear seems to be high and the ability to discern is so low, especially amongst Christians. Of course, we're seeing so many things change. And the fact that we're not meeting together means that there's a lack of authority coming from the pulpit. We're presented with a pick and mix selection of sermons from a video platform that sees us trawling the internet and social media, trying to find opinions that will both offer narratives that are confusing, man-made theories and agendas that will actually tickle our ears. In this season, a Christian is actively seeking God and able to sift through the information simply to hear a divine revelation. For me, in this season, I keep coming back to two verses. One is a reminder from the, one of the letters from John that tells us that perfect love casts out all fear. And the other is that we must be transformed by the renewing of our minds, taken from the book of Romans. In this difficult and deceptive time, we have to sanctify our minds and we must come to any information with a mind renewed and free from the corruption of the world, the influence of well-meaning friends and the overload of information from a manipulated online network of stuff. A renewed mind truly helps us to know God and allows us to hear pure things, his good and pleasing will. A renewed mind is full of perfect love and allows fear to have no influence. One of the questions that I keep getting asked at this time is the fact that we are being offered multiple and differing vaccinations to treat COVID. And we are challenged by the decision as to whether to take it or not. From what I read online, it seems to be forming a divide within the church. And more and more I see Christians making these extreme decisions without any evidence of seeking God first. My issue with any decision is that we must first seek God, always first about all things. It seems to me that we will go to any source except the source, which is God, to make our decisions on something. But ultimately we need to decide on, with direct instruction from the throne room. I don't know at this stage whether there's a direct choice between taking the vaccine or accepting Jesus, but that's something that I seem to have heard spoken about. And I've even heard people concluding that this vaccine may be the mark of the beast. <laughs> to be true, there's a whole lot of the Bible that hasn't happened yet to be at that stage. <laughs> Some of the messages that uh, a scene shared, they seem to believe that we've arrived at this period in Revelation chapter 13, but actually skipped over and missed many of the things that seem are going to happen from Revelation chapter 4 to 12. This forced choice of whether we take the vaccine or Jesus has taken us to a place that is additional to scripture. And therefore, less likely to be God-breathed. Whether you take this vaccine or not is not a biblical choice. Rather, it's a personal choice and maybe one that God is asking us to make. Maybe for you, God is allowing you to be tested personally in this. But the choice is one that we must seek and travail before God in and hear directly from him. It's what we should always do about any decision we make. Hey, that's not to say that post-rapture, post-seals, post-plagues, post-tribulation, post-witnesses and post-beast, that this mark that we're forced to take may not come in this form of a vaccine. 
maybe we're being tested on our faithfulness before God. But God is not commanding us to choose between medicine and him. The mark of the beast is a test of loyalty to the beast and a desire to turn away from God. When people actively make that choice, especially with the teaching in Revelation chapter 13, it's a deliberate thing. People are choosing to turn their back on God. They don't accidentally get caught out doing it. I don't believe that God will disqualify on a technicality. You will not get caught out. It will be a clear act of worship and obedience to this beast. How do we come to our conclusion about things that are going on? Are you making your decisions purely by coming before God? Or are you getting influenced by the things that you're watching, hearing or reading? For me, any revelation from God primarily comes from being alone in the throne room. Outside of that place, we're mainly presented with information. Every dream, every word, every thought has to be tested against the word of God. You would be amazed by the amount of things I've heard and beliefs that are coming out that are saying, well, I believe this because so-and-so said it. Or we must know this now because we saw this video. We know because God said it. And that is the truth. And then I've seen so many things that people claim that something is biblical. My understanding of this is because they've come to the conclusion because they've heard a few verses or seen a few memes, had a few interpretations and then they think they know the Bible. You know my heart and I've been aware so long for the last decade we've been talking about this great Bible poverty in this generation. We've accelerated to a place of becoming a meme based generation who seem to snack on a few choice verses but have never read the whole book. They base their interpretation of who they think God is by a few quick quips. They pick and choose verses and then they have the audacity to claim whether a belief was biblical or not without knowing context. In this they prove themselves to be strangers to scripture. How we see the church fall because they have an acquaintance with scripture, but they don't know the word. We must always first find out what God is saying to us through the Bible. That for me is the truth. And the truth is not opposite of lies. It's a reality that we can rely on. <laughs> Actually, if you think about it, when it comes to the vaccine, there are no verses directly about a vaccination. So any conclusion otherwise has to be somewhat supplementary to scripture. Let me define that. You see, for example, if we say that the mark of the beast is put on your right hand or your forehead, then you're quoting scripture. And that is truth. If we're forced to take something which is administered to our right hand or our forehead, we will listen. However, if we have to say that the mark of the beast is a vaccine, well actually that's supplementary to scripture and is therefore based on interpretation. It may not be wrong, but all interpretation is at the risk of manipulation by man. I believe that when we take Jesus literally, at his word, we remain safe in his word. As I've been praying all about this, I can't help thinking about the apostasy and the falling away that will happen. You know, people will leave God behind, but they won't stop influencing the church and the believers. The Lord has reminded me that in the last days, people will be swayed by false teachers. That we're meant to be as wise as serpents, and to test every spirit and make every thought obedient to Christ. Every thought, every opinion we take captive and we see what Jesus says about it. 
The Spirit clearly says in later times, some will abandon the faith and they'll follow deceiving spirits and taught things that are given to them by demons. Such teachings will come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. People will abandon the faith, but they'll still follow the teaching of demons. Interestingly, those deceiving spirits are not defined in Timothy as lapsed in morals, but they're lawgivers, telling people what they can and can't do and teaching people to be afraid. These kind of teachers are conceited, they love controversy and quarrels, and they bring friction to those with a depraved mind. They teach a legalistic doctrine, and they teach godliness as gain, and they use fear. Pictorially, their teaching spreads like gangrene. That's what Paul says, it's a disease. And it causes people's faith to be upset. You know, sometimes you need to read books like Timothy. Both letters, they're a great, enlightening read. Actually, the Lord's servant, though, they're not quarrelsome. They're kind to everyone. They're willing to teach those who will listen. They will patiently endure evil. And they will gently, yes, gently, correct those who are led astray, all with the purpose of bringing them to a knowledge of Jesus' truth. They will not use condemnation as a punishment, rather they will allow the Holy Spirit to convict because they trust God. They will not use fear. They'll teach reality, but more than anything they'll teach freedom. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Fear is a great weapon, but it's so often used by these false teachers. They make their teaching sound godly, but they deny any power that God has. Demons will always make you do stuff. They force people to do legalistic things, maybe like fasting, so that you get the approval of man, rather than because you just desire to seek God and have pleasure in doing it. These demons, they force people to conform to this post-truth narrative, encouraging us to condone sin in the name of tolerance, and then shouting us down and calling us names when we don't conform. Wow, there are so many deceiving spirits, as the Bible says. And they manipulate the people of this world. You know, in my experience and as I spend time in intimacy with God, he teaches a great lesson. He always invites. He doesn't force us. More than anything, he asks us to trust him and turn to him. Most of our troubles come when we don't. But still, he gives us an invitation. Instead, I watch people use the tools of this world to go seeking after other theories from those who have not been alone with God, who know nothing about intimacy, but live teaching of corrupt, depraved and distracted minds. These people can't be trusted because their motives are corrupt. They wish to be listened to and try to pretend to others that they have something special that God's spirit is actually saying. But beware, because we, without testing the spirits, you will not know whether that spirit is or is not the Holy Spirit speaking. We have to seek God, to 
to spend time with Jesus and to listen to him, led by the Holy Spirit. Peace comes that way, and in reality, so does truth. Actually, the more I think about it, you see a spirit working within believers in the world. It's a spirit seen in both Pharisees and politicians, that people must conform to their way of thinking and woe betide anybody that doesn't. I can see that spirit at work in people who are both pro and against this vaccine. It's the same spirit that was at work in the UK during the EU referendum. And the same spirit is at work within the church today. In this most challenging of times, we need to seek God more than anything. Perfect love will cast out all fear. I repeat, perfect love casts out all fear. The overall answer is this. Get alone with God. Pray. Listen. Read the Bible. Don't seek other people's opinions. Stay off the internet and social media for your source of information. Get alone with God. Pray. Read the Bible. And listen to him. A strong body on the earth is a people who know God and know his word. We get there by having intimacy with him and with a renewed mind. Once we do that, then we will know the truth and the truth will set us free.